Section 13.3, employee benefits. What we're going to do is calculate the rate of employee benefits based on annual gross pay. So that's how much they make for a year. Um, when you guys go out and apply for jobs, maybe there's two jobs that you're going, oh, I don't know which one I should take because they offer different things. Um, if you could actually figure out what their rate of benefits were, um, it might help you choose one job or the other. For instance, if you have um, two jobs that are equal in pay, then of course it comes down to the benefits. Which one has better benefits? What if one pays more but has less benefits than the other one? You know, then you got to kind of make a choice. So you have to kind of figure out how, you know, does this difference in pay with the benefits included, maybe it actually pays more. You know, so um, that's what this lesson is kind of all about is how can you compare two jobs that have different benefits um, if you could find the percent of benefits that they, they offer. And sometimes they tell you what the percent of benefits would be. Um, and maybe that would be a question you could ask them because then they could tell you. Um, and then you could pick the best job for you. So um, make sure you know um, probably three of these benefits that you could write down. And I think the question is something like, um, name three um, examples of benefits that we talked about in class. Okay, you know, so look through the list, pick three, remember them. So health insurance is a big one because health insurance is very expensive. Then we have vision insurance and dental insurance. Not all places offer that, but it would be um, an option. Group life insurance, retirement plans, social security, Medicare, stock purchase plans, paid vacations and holidays, and then unemployment insurance, disability insurance, and sick leave. The ones that we think of the most are health insurance, sick leave, and maybe vacation days. Okay, those would be three that would be really easy to remember. Um, although if you just think insurance, health, dental, vision, done. Okay, so remember three of those. The rate of benefits, we would add up all of the amount of benefits and divide by the gross pay that this person or we would be making. Part-time employees earn less benefits than full-time employees. Um, they normally don't receive like vacation time. Sometimes they don't get overtime. They don't get benefits like that, like the, um, the full-time employees get. Also, the cost of part-time employees is less than full-time employees. So um, keep that in mind. Here's the first one. The Personnel Department of Commercial Credit Company is preparing annual reports on employee benefits. Tamika's rate of benefits are below. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out each one. For you guys, it will kind of be like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. Um, I'm going to number those or um, letter those just like they kind of are in the book. Okay, so we're kind of going to do A through H, and it all starts with the annual salary. So they're going to give you an annual salary, then they're going to ask you some questions regarding that annual salary. Um, they might want you to bring it to a weekly salary, they might want a daily salary, and then we're going to use those different amounts um, to figure out the ones that are missing. So um, I'm, I'm going to also do a daily salary up here too. Okay. Okay, so how many weeks in a year? 52. So we're going to divide the annual salary by 52. So anytime they ask you for the weekly salary, that's what you're going to do. Um, so let's calculate as we go. 41,340 divided by 52. So this person makes $795 a week. So any of those that are talking about weekly, we're going to use $7.95 as the base um, salary. So when you look at the next one, it says they get a two-week vacation. Wouldn't that be two times $7.95? Because we've already figured that out. So really, the, um, the benefits don't really start until you actually start using those two. It's everything under this line that I have just made. 
Okay, so here's an example of 795 is our weekly salary. If you can be gone for two weeks, we're just going to take that salary times two. So 1590. Now the hard, hardest one is the daily um, rate, and I have kind of a hint up here. <coughs> we are not going to divide by 365. I do know that there's 365 days in a year, but how many people in the world work every single day of the year? Okay, there's probably some, you know, farmers pretty much work every single day of the year, right? They have cattle and land and everything. There are jobs that do, but for the most part, most people work five days a week, and that's what they're assuming on this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our annual salary, we're gonna divide by 52 to make it a weekly salary, so we already actually know how much they make it a week, and then we're gonna divide that weekly salary by five. So we're not considering overtime, we're not considering weekends, just basically a Monday through Friday thing. So I'm going to do the whole thing, but we already know weekly, so I could actually just start with 7.95 and divide it by 5. Um, but I do want you to know what we're doing to get that one more time. So we're going to take 41,340 divided by 52. That would give us a weekly salary. We're going to divide it by 5. This would be how much per day? $159. So if we take that $7.95 and we divide it by 5, you do get the same thing. So you can kind of figure that one out however you want to. So when we use our holiday pay, it's 8 days. So we're going to take 159 times 8. So since 159 was the daily amount, that's why we picked that one. Since the other one was a weekly amount, that's why we picked that one. So you're going to be using these two numbers throughout the rest of the um, assignment. Okay, so 159 times 8 is 1272. Okay, then it says health insurance is 162.50 per month. How many months in a year? 12. Take it times 12. So 162.50 times 12 is 1950. Uh, sick leave is 30 days. So what amount do I take 30 times? 41,000 number, the 795 or the 159? The 159, because it's days again. So we go up here to the days, and we multiply that times 159. So we get 47.70. Um, the next three have to do with the annual salary. So for this next one, it says 4.6% of the annual salary. So we're going to multiply this times 41,340. So basically you're kind of going between the 41,000 number, the weekly answer, and the daily answer. You're grabbing one of those numbers first and you're multiplying by whatever it says. So 4.6% times that big number, 41,340, and you get 1901.64. And we're going to do the same thing with FICA and Medicare. Remember FICA is um, Social Security. And this means times, and this one will multiply by 41,340 again as well. So 256308 and 59943. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add up everything A through G just under the line. Okay, so we don't want to add in the weekly salary, don't want to add in the daily salary, we do not want to add in the annual salary. So we're going to add them straight down. Fourteen six forty six 
15 looks good. And then we're going to divide it by the annual salary. Um, that's going to give you a decimal, 0.354. And you're going to want to take that times 100 again to turn it into a percentage. So 35.4%. So um, what if we had jobs that... Uh, one of them, you are making the 41340 and you had this rate of benefits. Maybe the other one, you had, you're making 30000 but maybe you have 40% in benefits. Maybe that's enough to sway you to take the one with greater benefits. I don't know. Um, for some, it might depend on your age and whether you're going to use those benefits because a lot of them are health-related. So, um, you know, that's, that's a big deal too. Um, Sometimes there are, like if you're married, there are insurance programs through one of your works that are better than the other. Um, maybe they pay a higher percentage at one of your jobs than the other. You would definitely take it through the one that you have to pay less, you know, that kind of thing. So this isn't something that happens all the time because, you know, usually if you're married, you're kind of sharing those depending on what they do. So you guys are going to do that. Um, what I want to kind of explain really quickly is... When you get to, for instance, number 1J, that's the total benefits. They still want you to do the rate of benefits after that. If you want to just add another letter and make it K and do that percentage, you can do that. When you flip to uh, number 8 on page 494, um, you have four different categories of jobs at a French coffee shop. Um, one is the manager, so you're going to figure out all A through F for that, man for that manager. They are going to just give you the total benefits for F, but notice underneath it you have a B. What is the rate of benefits? Why not just make that G instead? So if you do A through G, you will have every single part of that question answered, and it won't be in a different place. So you can just calculate it right as you go. Um, we, I chose not to assign number 9 today, so we're going to stop after number 8. As long as you find the percent for each of those jobs, um, then you will be done. And you can call that G um, again, kind of like I put an extra letter on this one. So they will be very, very similar to this one. Um, if you need to watch the video again, of course you can. Um, if you need to just look at what we did in the written form, um, that will be posted here shortly.